What does it take to be a hacker? Is it just about breaking into systems or is there more to it? Well, it's not just about the technical skills. Being a hacker is as much about the mindset as it is about the skill set. It's about a certain way of thinking, a certain approach to problem solving, and an insatiable curiosity to know how things work. So, what does this hacker's mindset look like? Firstly, it's about curiosity. A hacker is endlessly curious, always asking questions, always wanting to know more. They're not satisfied with surface-level understanding. They want to dig deeper, to understand the inner workings and hidden mechanisms of systems. They want to know what makes things tick. Next, it's about persistence. Hacking isn't easy. It's not something you can master overnight. It takes time, effort, and a whole lot of trial and error. But a hacker doesn't give up. They keep pushing, keep trying, keep testing until to God they find a solution. They treat each failure not as a setback, but as a learning opportunity. And finally, it's about problem solving. Hackers are problem solvers at heart. They thrive on challenges, on finding solutions where others see only obstacles. They have a knack for thinking outside the box, for finding unconventional ways to bypass barriers and overcome hurdles. Being a hacker, therefore, is not just about knowing how to code or how to exploit a system's vulnerabilities. It's about the mindset. It's about having the curiosity to explore, the persistence to keep going, and the problem-solving skills to find solutions. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. And in the world of hacking, this is more true than ever. Hackers have the power to do great harm, but they also have the potential to do great good. It all depends on how they choose to use their skills and their mindset. So a hacker's mindset is about curiosity, persistence, and problem solving. But what about the technical skills? A hacker without coding knowledge is like a painter without a brush. But what languages should a hacker know? As the artist of the digital world, a hacker must know his tools, his colors, his canvas. Coding is the brush that paints the strokes of innovation. Understanding several programming languages is paramount. Each language offers unique strengths, catering to different aspects of hacking. Python, for instance, is often considered a good starting point. Its simplicity and versatility make it a favorite among novices and experts alike. But the hacker's palette doesn't stop there. Languages like C++, Java, and JavaScript are also crucial. C++ for its raw power and control, Java for its widespread use in enterprise environments, and JavaScript, the lifeblood of the web. Mastering these languages takes time and patience, but the reward is immense. Knowing how to code is crucial, but it's just the beginning. Let's look at what else a hacker should know. How can you break into a house if you don't understand how it's built? This question perfectly encapsulates why a hacker needs a thorough understanding of networks and systems. We're talking about the cyber equivalent of blueprints and schematics, the digital DNA that makes up the backbone of the internet and devices we use every day. It's akin to a master locksmith understanding the inner workings of a lock before they can pick it. So, let's dive into the world of networks first. Networks are like the highways of our digital world, connecting devices and facilitating communication. IP addresses are the street names and house numbers of this highway. They are unique identifiers that tell us where data is coming from and where it's going. Understanding how data travels and how IP addresses work is fundamental to a hacker. And then there are firewalls, the digital equivalent of a fortress wall. They're designed to keep out unwanted visitors, blocking certain types of data and specific IP addresses. But a skilled hacker knows how to bypass these digital guards, using their understanding of how firewalls work to their advantage. But what about when a hacker doesn't want to be traced? That's where VPNs, or virtual private networks, come into play. Think of a VPN as a private tunnel on the digital highway, one that keeps your IP address hidden from view. Knowing how to use a VPN effectively can make a hacker virtually invisible. Now let's talk about systems. Systems are the actual devices on our digital highway like computers, smartphones, servers, and more. Each has its own unique architecture with different strengths and vulnerabilities. A hacker must understand these nuances to exploit them effectively. In essence, understanding networks and systems is like learning the language of the digital world. It allows a hacker to navigate the vast cyber landscape, finding the cracks in the digital armor and slipping through unseen. So a deep understanding of networks and systems is key, but even that's not enough on its own. To break the rules, you first need to understand them. This adage rings especially true when delving into the realm of cybersecurity. 
Just as a mechanic can't fix a car without understanding its intricacies, a hacker can't navigate the digital world without a fundamental understanding of cybersecurity. Consider encryption, for instance. In the simplest of terms, encryption is the process of converting information or data into a code to prevent unauthorized access. It's like the secret language you may have created with your friends as a child but on a much more complex scale. It's the digital lock on the door to your personal information. Therefore, understanding encryption isn't just beneficial, it's essential. Then we have authentication. This is the process of verifying the identity of a user, device, or system. It's like the bouncer at the entrance of a club, checking IDs and ensuring only the right people gain entry. In the digital world, this could be anything from a simple password to biometric data like fingerprints or facial recognition. Now let's talk about intrusion detection systems, often referred to as IDS. These systems monitor network traffic for suspicious activity and issue alerts when such activity is discovered. It's the digital equivalent of a security guard patrolling a building, keeping an eye out for any potential intruders. Each of these elements, encryption, authentication, and intrusion detection systems, form the bedrock of cybersecurity. They are the fundamental principles that govern how we secure our digital world. As a hacker, understanding these elements isn't simply about knowing how to break them. It's about understanding their strengths, their weaknesses, and how they interact with one another. In essence, the more you understand about cybersecurity fundamentals, the more equipped you are to navigate the complex digital landscape. So, while it might be tempting to skip over the basics and dive straight into the deep end, remember this, knowledge is power. And in the world of hacking, that power can mean the difference between success and failure. Understanding cybersecurity fundamentals is important, but there's one last piece of the puzzle. Finally, a hacker isn't just a technical expert. They're also someone who needs to make ethical decisions. When we talk about hacking, it's not always about breaking into systems or causing havoc. In fact, one of the most important aspects of hacking is the concept of ethical hacking. Ethical hacking, also known as penetration testing or white hat hacking, is all about using your skills for good. It's about finding vulnerabilities and weaknesses in systems with the goal of improving security, rather than exploiting those weaknesses for personal gain or malicious intent. It's like being a digital Robin Hood, using your knowledge to protect the little guy from the big bad wolf of cyber threats. But why does ethical hacking matter? Well, imagine the consequences if a hacker decided to use their skills unethically. They could steal personal data, cause financial loss, or even harm national security. The potential for damage is immense. That's why it's so important to have a strong ethical compass as a hacker. Being ethical isn't just about avoiding harm though. It's also about respecting privacy, being transparent, and maintaining trust. As a hacker, you might have access to sensitive information. It's your responsibility to respect that trust and use the information responsibly. It's also important to keep in mind that hacking, even ethical hacking, is subject to laws and regulations. In many places, unauthorized hacking is illegal, no matter the intention. So, before you jump into the world of hacking, make sure you understand the legal landscape. The path of a hacker is a challenging one, filled with complex problems to solve and new things to learn. But it's also a path that requires a strong sense of right and wrong. As a hacker, your actions can have far-reaching consequences. It's up to you to make sure those consequences are positive. So, to be a hacker, you need a mix of a curious mindset, technical skills, system understanding, cybersecurity knowledge, and a strong ethical compass. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use your hacking powers wisely. So, what does it take to be a hacker? Well, as we've journeyed together through the complexities and nuances of the hacker's universe, we've discovered that it's not just about understanding the digital landscape. It's also about the mindset. It's about being inquisitive, relentless, dedicated, and endlessly curious. It's about mastering the language of code, becoming fluent in the intricate dialects of Python, Java, and C++. It's about diving deep into the world of networks and systems, learning how they function and how they can be manipulated. It's about understanding the ins and outs of cybersecurity, the defenses, the vulnerabilities, and the ever-evolving threats. But above all, it's about ethical considerations. It's about knowing the difference between right and wrong, between exploration and exploitation. In the world of hacking, knowledge is power. But remember, with great power comes